Alrighty, here we go. My name is Travis Neville. This is the Travis Neville Podcast. At least I'm sitting in his chair and there's his name behind me. Um, this is my newest book. It's called Ideal Man Re- uh, Mastering Masculinity. It is meant to be a follow-up to this book, my, the book I published in 22 called Ideal Man Reviving Masculinity. This, These are the habits that if you want to be successful as a man, you will practice. So as a young man, this is how you build your power. And then this is sort of a midlife checkpoint, the new one, Mastering Masculinity, the black one. Uh, midlife checkpoint, it's going to tell you essentially, are you effectively giving away that power? Are you using your strength to help others in the way that you should? Are you, uh, yeah, reaping the rewards of life? Things like physical health, preparedness, love, home, uh, a sense of purpose. These are the things that should be in your life as you continue to develop. As a man, I'm very proud of both of those works. You can get them anywhere fine books are sold and places even that books that aren't so fine are sold. Uh, BarnesandNoble.com, not that that's not for fine books. You can go to TravisNeville.com and get a signed copy. You can uh, go to Amazon, of course, and get either of them. Um, there's an audible version of the white cover, white cover one, Reviving Masculinity. I have not yet started recording. The audible for the new one i will get that done in the next by the end of the month of the month of july you're hearing it here first i'm going to commit to that to have the audio audiobook version on audible uh in addition to that you can get ebooks of both of them you can get them on kindle all of that stuff okay enough plugs um and a dude that i know sent me a very in-depth and seem to be heartfelt text uh, a guy that I've worked with professionally who encouraged me to record more, that I have a gift. And what it did is it opened my mind to that possibility that, you know, I always thought, hey, I was recording these podcasts just to sell books because that's how it went, man. I wrote my first book and then I started a podcast to promote the book. Um, and I quickly found that podcasting kind of became its own thing. I enjoyed it as a, I enjoy it as a format to connect with other creators, other authors. Um, psychologists, experts in various fields, dating experts, health, all the things that I'm interested in. What a cool thing to be able to take a hard felt dedicated hour and talk to somebody maybe across the country about a topic that is interesting to me. And uh, I have lost that for whatever reason over the last year. I've, I've rarely recorded and uh, I've forgotten why I liked it so much and why it's so helpful to me. And I've, again, Thanks, Rob, for reminding me that um, I'm helping others when I do this. I kind of lost sight of that. So uh, to that end, here we go. The next, uh, I want to talk about this this topic of faith today. Um, it's, and all I'm going to do is tell you with my limited body of knowledge, sort of where I've gone with the topic of faith. And I don't specifically mean like religion. I mean, you can play it that way if you want to, if that's if that's how it, it goes for you. I'm just going to tell you kind of the conclusions that I've come to. And they're all working conclusions, all right? They're all like, all right, this is what I know so far uh, about the topic of faith. It has uh, become, as I spend more time alone, it's, you know, I, typic- I really am sort of your stereotypical, almost recluse level um, writer. And I think to the that's a common that's a common thing like they say that you know if you want to know about a thing ask a cowboy because he's had lots of time to think about it all that time riding alone in the saddle out checking fences and doing all the things cowboys do or did and uh i believe that that's effective to i think it's the solo time the alone time solitude that allows you to develop the ideas that you have in your life and allows you to uh grow mentally emotionally to grow intellectually for sure that's really what i was going for there i guess um and so to that end man i've I've come to some ideas here i've I've broached and i've changed and i've made some uh adjustments so just a little background on faith i was always the guy i can remember in high school being in class and like it like uh, ap english class 
I think that would be the one. Anyway, Marsha Kukuk was the stu this student that I graduated with. Really sharp girl. Uh, Aaron uh, Hitchens was the same way. Uh, both very smart and, and both women of faith at that time, for sure, like in the traditional sense. And I can remember having pretty epic battles about religion with them. Um, you know, and me just constantly coming back to the point of, well, then prove it. Well, then prove it. <laughs> prove it. And uh, so that was always the, you know, I took the the intellectual route there, the, the logical route. I can remember those those uh, conversations very clearly. And thanks to both of you ladies for pushing me like you did. Um, it makes everybody better. Um, I was always that guy. And, and, I, and I've spent most of my life believing like this. Hey, I'm never going to prove it. So I'm not going to spend any time thinking about it. It just seemed like a waste of time to me. As if I'm not going to come to any conclusion, if I'm not going to come to any facts, then what's the point of thinking? And I have, as I've matured and gone through more things in my life, realized that it doesn't have to have a finish line and it doesn't have to be factual and it doesn't have to be logical for it to make sense. And, and you know, how does this play into your life as a, as a man, that's what this all is about, right? Being better at being a man. Well, um, what it is is an acceptance of something that's outside of you as a man. It's like this. It's like those girls. They're girls, right? And they would argue with me, and they would get very emotional because faith is an emotional topic, and I don't mean people get emotional about it. They do, but faith by nature is emotional. There is very little about it that is logical. Now, as we talk today, I'm going to try to form it into some squares and you know, make it sort of seem like it makes a little bit of sense or that at least that it has logical support behind it. But you have to accept that to begin with. Okay, it's a thing that you're never going to be able to put it in a box. But there are some tremendous upsides. So um, that's where I started, like I said. Um, and I've come to this conclusion. I've moved in this direction of, you know, I go from my can't prove its existence, so why would I believe in it? Uh, and I'm never going to figure it out to, well, because I can't prove its existence and I'm never going to know, well, I might as well kind of decide that it's going to be what I want it to be. You know, if there is no conclusion, then I'll make my own conclusion. I'll, I'll, I would rather it be a thing that I wish it were. You know what I mean? So I can make it in that way most helpful to me, if that makes any sense. Um, like like for this, for example, you might choose to call it call it God or Jesus or whatever, you know, kind of blows your hair back there. Um, I don't know. I haven't gotten that far. You know, I, I really believe that, um, you know, they say this thing, they say this thing that God made man in his own image, right? And, and you hear that everywhere. But man, doesn't it make a lot more sense if the opposite's true? Like if maybe there is some sort of a force out there or a collection of forces, if that's true. Um, if you, how about this? If you believe it's true, if you have faith in the fact that it's true, doesn't it make more sense that you, for ease of handling, for for the uh, sake of of having a, a grasping handle on this thing, to be able to grip it, and move it around, and uh, treat it like a noun, you know, a person, place, or thing, where it kind of you can sense it, doesn't it make more sense that man would make God in his own image? Right, so that you can kind of have some sort of a way to relate. Uh, to me, that makes more sense. Um, and when I when I look at it like that, I, I don't often use the word God at all, unless I'm just fucking around or whatever. But um, when I look at this faith, this this thing outside of me, and we'll get more into that in a second. I, I keep coming to this conclusion. My faith in that thing, whatever I believe that is, that it's this force that's outside of me would never put me in a position so bad unless I have something tremendous to gain from it. You know, I say that a lot. Like, and to me, that creates a, a like a, a diminishing of anxiety where I'm like, well, you know, what if I moved all the way up here to northern Michigan and, and started this business and built this house and did all these things only to have the economy crash and I'm going to lose it all? Well, I don't believe that the forces that be would do that to me. Because, you know, that happened to me already once in 2008, right? You know, like I put all my money in. Everybody told me, you know, buy a house, so go to college, uh, buy a house, get married, you know, and your life's going to be great. Well, 
none of those three at the, you know in 2008 were working for me <laughs> got married the the marriage went to shit like from the beginning i bought this house for ninety one thousand dollars and, and i think i gave it back to the bank at twenty four thousand or something like it just took a giant shit my teaching career i although i really enjoyed it um it never had any kind of security you know i got i got laid off from every job i ever had or, or at least left under conditions that were not of my own making um and uh so that that's the thing that i look at here like the powers that i choose to dis believe are there they wouldn't put me in a position so bad not again you know what i mean so what that does is it relieves anxiety i'm kind of bouncing around here but uh you know they say billions of people can't be wrong you know people all over the world since the beginning of eternity have worshipped something they have believed there's something outside of me uh, that controls things and and knows the answers to things that I don't know the answers to, like right down to oh my gosh, it's a like a solar eclipse must be the end of the world. We better you know Mayan and Aztecs or whoever we better start cutting some heads off, um, whatever to appease these gods, you know. So the, it's this has been an idea forever, and it's easy to look. It was easy for me always to look at it as a very antiquated thing. Well, that's just a thing they did way back then, and we're way way smarter, more evolved now. But are we? You know, we're still the same biological animals that we've always been. And, you know, the, the average IQ has not gone up not one bit. Um, humans are still humans. We're not selectively breeding for intelligence. Education has, uh, educational attainment, how about that, has, has risen. But, man, I'd be the first one to tell you that my master's degree was probably about on the level of, of academic difficulty as maybe high school was at a good private high school 50 years ago 80 years ago you know there are there are college courses, you know latin and all that greek and all that like all the memorizing they had to do was a lot harder you know let's let's face it academics today are a joke they're so watered down and more people are getting degrees not because people are smarter it's because college is easier you know nobody's any smarter right that's that's not how it goes um, anyway, so it'd be easy for me to look at it that way and say, well, we're, we're all smarter now. And we know better than that. I don't know. I don't, I don't think so. Humans are not smarter. I know that for sure. Uh, so is there room for faith? Well, I've decided that there is in my life. Um, there are things that I can't control and I'm not looking for an answer on those. It's not about that. I always thought that it was, I thought it was about, well, I don't know. Oh, it rained today. I was supposed to, I just washed my truck. What the hell? Like, I need to pray to make that not happen. It's not about that. It's about relieving anxiety. And I'll talk more about that later because that's what it's done for me. Um, so the difference between a religion and faith. Religion is like a, and I don't want to knock it because there's people who love it. And that's, that's cool. Um, but religion is like a strict Kind of an external set of rituals that you follow. Um, I'm sure most churches are that way. I've been in several different denominations of churches for various reasons, and that's what I've seen. Like I said, I, I don't see that as being bad or wrong, uh, but I don't like the sort of the. There's a certain up. There's definitely an upside of being into in a church, right? You got a lot of social aspects there. You got a place where you can go once a week or more and hear a great message and kind of reset your day, reset your week and get yourself on the right track. There's a, you know, the whole idea of life after death is very comforting. There's, there's all these things that, that religion sort of carries with it. I just don't like sort of the, the, the cover charge, you know, you, you got to be there or people are going to throw some filth on you. Um, if you go in there and you, you discuss topics, high-minded ideals, and you talk about your faith, and then you get a DUI, all of a sudden now you're a hypocrite and now it becomes a thing that can be used against you. You know, look at the Middle East for crying out loud. I mean, religion's why they do all of that shit. Why they've been fighting and killing each other since the beginning of time. It's all it's all religion. I don't think it's I'm not saying it's not faith based, because there's faith there too. Uh, there there must be. But religion is a massive part of it. A massive part of it is this huge peer pressure structure, which usually a whole, the whole idea of religion, that's what it was from the beginning. My, my dad always used to say, religion is there to control people. you know. And he always said it in such a bad way. But I look at it and it, it sort of makes sense. 
really what I, the way I look at it now is, yeah, it does kind of control people. It kind of keeps them under control, like from themselves. You know, thou shalt not kill. <laughs> Just for starters, um, you know, you know, we're going to give you some things that maybe you can be afraid of that'll keep you from doing things that are bad. Uh, and, and to that end, I think there are certainly Western religions are ones that um, they do. They can help you. They can save you from yourself. They can do a lot of these great things. Now, in the wrong hands, of course, and I think power is pretty much always bad. The only people who are good at being in power are those who do not want that power. You know, I refer back to George Washington all the time. He's the only president we've ever had that did not want to be president. They've asked him to. Said, hey, it's your duty as an American. We want you to be our first president. Matter of fact, some people have said this before, came to him and said, you, you're going to be our king. And he said, speak not of this ever again or something like that. Basically said, bitch, I'm not a king. I'm never going to be one. We're not going to be like England. Fuck that. Which I love about that guy. I mean, huge George Washington fan. Um, and uh, so so that's the sort of the difference between religion. That, that's what religion is. It's a bunch of rituals, lack of a better way of saying it. Um, yeah, and I don't really want that. Like, I, I'm not, I don't think I want to go someplace and practice what I'm learning about the faith that I'm starting to develop in front of people or around people or have to submit to their sort of, again, their rituals and their, their habits. I don't know if that's for me. Um, who knows, man, you know, it might push me down a path that I might not naturally get to anyway and i'm trying to develop this for myself i think that faith for me is a very personal thing like it really is just me like i i have talked about it with three people in the world well now all you guys but um this is not a discussion this is a lecture so i'm just telling you where i am with it but uh yeah i don't know so i don't know if i want to go do that um but i i do like the the idea that when you if you are going to talk about it with somebody you can kind of take the like the Talladega Knights approach, where he's like, I, I like to imagine Jesus as a little tiny baby, little baby Jesus, you know. And they're talking about how they see this greater force that they represent, that they recognize in their lives. And it's, you know, I understand it to that extent. I get it that far. I don't, I don't have like, again, I don't have the answers, but I can understand the thought process that got them to that point. Now, I haven't fleshed it out like that yet. I don't see a face or a, imagine a being. I don't anything. Um, I just recognize that there are things in my life that I cannot control. And I take tremendous comfort in letting go of those things. Like, I can't control. And I say, you know, I, I talk about this probably too much, but I cannot control. If if the if I'm gonna cross paths with the right woman for me, I cannot control that. All I can do is live my life the best I can, and you you're probably gonna bump into somebody who's got similar um, interests as you, or you're gonna meet you're gonna meet you're gonna make buddies with a guy, and and uh, you know like I had, I met this guy who in the gym, who actually came up to me and said, "Hey man, I, I saw you on the internet, and I love your shit." And I'm like, "Man, I know that guy from the gym. Are you, you know, you're Travis, right? You know, we get to, we shake hands, and he ends up being this great guy. He's in the police department, and um, you know, I was over at his house last night. He he cut down. Uh, I had this log that I got from my, my buddy Travis. No relation. Took it over to him, and he put, uh, you know, put, some, put it down. He's got a log mill, so he cut it down to the three flat sides, and I'm gonna be able to use it as a mantle for the fireplace here in my living room, which is gonna be." badass i'm super pumped about it um anyway i meet his wife she's a pretty lady very very nice and and very mom like and um they live on this cool farm and and she's uh works in healthcare. and i'm like no well maybe she knows somebody and I'll, she'll end up introducing me you just never know you know you just go on about your life and and uh sort of cross your fingers and, and it's kind of that cross your fingers thing is is where i'm kind of extrapolating today i'm like all right, well, what does that mean? You know, all right, so there's things obviously that I'm gotta, I got to hope for. So let's think deep, more deeply about that process of what does that hope look like? Where does it go? How does it, you know, and uh, that's kind of where we are, right? So like I said, are there sort of powers out there that you can ask them to help you out? I don't know. I don't know. But if, but I do know this, like I told you, that 
there are things in my life that I am not under control, in control of. And initially for me, that was a very disorienting feeling. Because I talk about this all the time. It's in all, it's in all three of my books. I talk about it all the time in podcasts. Your life is 100% the result of your decisions. Okay? And I stand by that. I do. I stand by that because, again, as I said earlier, go on about your life, do things, do good things, help people out, and good things will come your way. That's true. And there is no like direct connection there, but it's, it's the most ridiculously strong, like, you know, um, loose bond, right? It's the most substance, or, uh, it's the word I'm looking for. Oh, man. It's, uh, subs- anyway, there's a good connection there about that. So that's where I come out with that. Um, and you know, you know, if we did have the answers, you know, if you did know that for sure there's an afterlife, for sure there's a God, for whatever, if you know that for sure when you die, you're going to go someplace that's awesome. Now, wouldn't that sort of be a letdown of sorts? Like, a letdown maybe is the wrong term, but what's to stop you from just smoking yourself? You know, bam, you know, getting it over with, turning the lights out. Because you know you're going to a better place. What, what do you got to lose? Right? If you knew that for sure. What's to stop everybody from, from killing themselves? And, and I think the opposite is true as well. What if we knew for sure that there wasn't? If we're just sacks of meat rolling around, we're going to rot, you know? And uh, I, I think the depression of that realization might be unbearable. Or, or maybe the realization of that would make you live your ass off. Maybe it would make you just live it up, kick some ass. and. You know, and, and fuck all the all the Catholic guilt. You know, get out there and have a blast. Do the coolest shit ever. Use the shit out of your out of your meat wagon here, um, your meat vehicle. You know, I, I like to talk, like I said, about working out. It makes every part of being a human better. Um, maybe you do it different, but because we don't know either of those things, I really believe that we're. And I heard a guy say this. I think it was on a Rogan podcast that uh, we really are at the perfect kind of sweet spot of actual understanding of where we are in the universe. We don't know. And I kind of hope we never do as humans. Isn't that, isn't that indeed the essence of humanity? Like, we know a lot of things, but the biggest things, the biggest mysteries, we don't know, and we're probably not going to know. And I, again, I'm sort of arguing that. I hope we never do. Uh, humanity would change. If there were answers, you know, it would change. It would be different. And without, if if you, and if, and again, and if you did know, then faith disappears. It isn't about faith anymore at all. It's about, well, I know the sun's coming up because, you know, the earth rotates at a certain speed and blah, blah, blah. Like it would just be another fact in your life. And so the faith would be gone completely. See, to me, like I said, I'm I'm calling this episode faith because that's the real crux of it, right? Like, for me, it's having faith that good things are going to come my way. Work hard. Things are going to go well. Treat your friends well. Treat your family well. Treat your, everyone in your kingdom as well as you can. And uh, first of all, that's rewarding and it feels good. And second, you know, if you ever need them, they're there. And I just got done telling you guys about how my friends all reacted. Now, everybody around me, really, uh, when, when my cat died. And... Uh, they knew I was down. There was absolutely zero judgment from anybody. Uh, everybody just chipped in and helped me out. And it felt un- amazing. I don't like asking for help. I don't think any man does. But when someone offers you their help, you're almost insulting them if you don't take it. You know what I mean? Um, and that's how I look at the sort of this faith thing. Like, there's going to be help that comes my way sometimes. And I'm not going to turn it down just because I didn't directly create it. You know, it came my way. I'll take advantage. I'll use it, whatever it might be. Whether it's, you know, I go through the ATM machine and there's $500 in cash sitting there. Um, I didn't see anybody leave. I, I, you know, it's insured. (laughs) That's maybe not a great example, but um, yeah, I'll take the cash. You know, Um, it's help. And sometimes you, get fucked and sometimes you get help take the help when it's there you know um let's see here 
So the afterlife thing, you know, not, I don't have a lot of answers on that. Um, I haven't thought about it much except for this concept of the rainbow bridge, which I'll talk about in a minute. But um, like I said, I know there are things in the universe I can't control. There are, there are forces that act upon me that, that I can't quantify. I was called luck, called karma, call it whatever you want. So my buddies and I are coming back from a great day of hanging out in this river. And we just found this shady spot at this turn of this warm, like two foot deep river. And we all put little floaties or camp chairs or whatever. And we sat in this water for like three hours one day. A little bit of music playing. We had cold beers going in our keg. And we just sat in the water and shot the shit. And uh, we're heading back to my cabin from there. And a car accident happens in front of us. And follow me on this. I'm going south on a road. There's somebody coming north directly towards me. And then it's at an intersection. And the person, there's somebody coming west who blew their stop sign in Kablaoui. It's the guy coming north. And thankfully, we're far enough behind where I wasn't in the middle of it. But I was right there. Like, I was the first one to get there. And uh, how do you quantify that? How do you, as the guy who's driving the vehicle heading north, minding his own business, some dude blows a stop sign and smokes your shit. You, that's out of your control. I mean... You absolutely, yeah, I mean, you decided what time you were going to leave. You decided the speed you were going to go, like all that. But it was not exactly an educated decision you were making. You know, and thankfully, you know, my buddies and, and I, we all jumped out. And my friends are stallions. I've told you this before. They're highly educated. They're all very fit. They make great money. They're great fathers. They're great husbands. They're good men, every one of them. Very good men. Top-notch men. And they immediately dismounted and, and, and jumped in. We started helping people. And I couldn't have been prouder of them. But again, there's, that's a thing in your life where, you know, that guy's like, what the hell happened? You know, I didn't pick this. It wasn't like I was playing Russian roulette here, um, you know? So as far as the afterlife thing, I don't know. I, like, I haven't really thought about that that much. But I do recognize this, that I don't know, okay? It's, it's me recognizing my inability to comprehend. And that's a form of humility, okay? And humility especially as you, you get a little bit older, you know, you spent, if, if you read the foreword for the new book, Mastering Masculinity, I, I got, I got Philip Folsom to write the foreword for me. And he's like, I got, I want this guy to adopt me. Like he's super smart, super calm, very mature. Like he's a, he's a great man by every metric. And uh, he specifically says in there that as a young man, you build your power, okay? you're, you're building your strength. And the point of that is so that you can give it away. Uh, use it to help people. Use your strength to protect. Use your resources to provide. Um, that's how that goes. And uh, humility certainly is a part of that. As you get older, you start realizing, well, I have developed my strength and I don't need to question that anymore. I don't have to get all up in hackles when a dude gets in the face. You know, if you lay your hands on me, that's a different thing if you square and close the ground. But, uh, you know, you don't have to because you're like, man, I'm sorry you're so upset. I'm not, you know. Uh, but again, there are things outside of your control is what I'm trying to tell you. And accepting that, and that's step one. And then step two, and this is by far the best part of it. And we're kind of summing it up here. But the best part of faith for me is to say, I can't control that. So I'm not going to try to. So I'm not going to worry about it. So I'm not going to let it be a backpack that I wear around every day that gets heavier and heavier. I can't control that. So I'm not going to let it be a part of my day. And even bigger than that, I will give it away. I'll let whatever you want to call it now take ownership of that thing. Can't control it anyway. The outcome is going to be the outcome. I can't really sway it. So I'm going to let that go. I'm going to let it go. And that's where I think the real power of, uh, of faith is, at least for me. Uh, anyway, the Rainbow Bridge, I mentioned that. That had been said to me several times, and I saw it in media, and, and I haven't really looked into it yet, but uh, the idea that when you cross that bridge, you know, all your loved ones will be there. And uh, it's, it's a beautiful idea, isn't it? I mean, how how does that do anything but make you feel better, make you feel more comfortable, make you happier. 
And if being happier and more comfortable isn't the point of being alive, or at least if it isn't a boon to your existence, man, I don't know what is. Um, yeah, nothing wrong with having some comfort. So if you can find some faith in your life, and again, it's going to take some humility to get there, young man. But uh, if you can, what it will, it'll only help you. Okay, and it isn't a thing where you beg it for scraps. It isn't a thing where you hope like hell that it's there to help you. It's not like you're, you know, kissing ass. It doesn't work that way. It's just an, it's just the idea, the concept that I can't control this, so I'm gonna, I'm not gonna try to. So that's where I come out with the faith. Um, it's helped me. It's made me a happier man. There's nothing wrong with it. My name is Travis Neville. This is the Travis Neville Podcast. I hope that in some way today's discussion of faith has helped you to get your shit together. Have a great week.